Hey, yes. So, it's a weird one today, okay? We're gonna get over it and breeze on through. I decided that I wanted to try this clay popping, clay cracking technique that I've seen going around the ASMR slash craft community and I wanted to give it a try because I thought it would be really interesting to see if I could make a picture and then do this technique and then crack it and destroy it because I just thought that would be fun and also it's like hmm not being so precious about something but creating something just to create it and having well not having no pressure because obviously I'm posting this to YouTube so there is a little bit of pressure but having no pressure in the sense that I don't have to keep this piece or use it for anything and it's just literally made for fun. I wanted to make two pieces because well I had enough clay to and I thought it would be cool to have a couple of scenes and so what I did is I measured out the clay and then I made sort of squarish rectangle squarish this is a rectangle a rectangular portrait clay thing I made it quite thick so when I do go to pop and crack the the clay it does actually have something to crack not just like be too thin I drew some landscapes on these clay portrait slabs I guess you would call them and I really enjoyed painting on clay actually I, how many times have I said clay in the last minute I really enjoyed painting on it though because the gouache just went on really nice it was like a really cool medium to work with just painting on over the top of clay just felt satisfying and yeah I think this is probably the best part of this process for me was actually doing the painting on top of the clay and it just felt nice. So it was a little bit difficult to work with, obviously the clay wasn't going to absorb any of the water or the gouache as much as paper did because, you know, it's a totally different medium. But I had to sort of layer on blocks of colour and I think this worked in my favour in the sense of the style of each of the things but obviously it was something that I had to get used to. I had to wait a little bit for it to dry but it took longer to dry because the clay underneath is a little bit wet and you know that's the point of this technique is to not let that clay dry so I had to be cautious of not to let the top layer of the clay dry too much but then have to let the gouache dry so that I could layer it a little bit better than I could yeah that's the story it's difficult to paint gouache on clay and I probably should have used acrylics but then I was afraid that the acrylics would dry too plasticky and it would be harder to crack it so I wanted to keep the clay wet and yeah in every like sort of video that I've watched about the clay it's been watercolors that I've seen being used so I thought gouache would work fine. I did do a few experiments um, the other day with watercolours and I think it comes out not as opaque as the gouache so I wanted to use gouache. So the next step in the process is painting over the top with copious amounts of clear nail polish. Now the instructions for this are to put a thin layer of clear nail polish down and because the reason for this is because obviously that layer needs to dry. And then you put another layer down and then that layer needs to dry and then you put another layer down and so this process continues for ages but i'm too impatient and i yep i just poured it right out and that was probably why one of them goes a little bit wrong so i poured out the clear nail polish and because it probably needs to be layers and layers of polish to dry properly it didn't really work. Um, the next day, they one of them peeled off completely because I think the nail polish was just a too thick of a layer. So this one is my <laughs> my practice piece because it just completely didn't work and I ran out of clear nail polish, so I couldn't really salvage it. So I decided to just go ahead and crack the one on the left and then try and salvage the one on the right. Yeah, it was 
pretty satisfying. It wasn't quite the crunch that I was looking for or the popping effect that I see other videos have. I think that's just because it is a big slab of clay rather than small pieces. If I do this again, which I might because it was actually really fun, then I'm gonna do a lot of smaller pieces and go from there. So with this one, what I wanted to do was patch it up with similar nail polishes on the parts that were no longer covered with nail polish because it sort of had some cracks in it and I ran out of clear, like I said, so I wanted to just patch that up because I think you have to have like a force field of nail polish to be able to just crack and splinter that uh, nail polish to make that cracking sound. So I wanted to do that just to fix it up and then I'm gonna go over this again and paint over. As you can see, the clear nail polish kind of smudged and blurred all the details, which I didn't foresee happening, I don't know why. When I was painting it, the details were fine, like they smudged a little bit, but as the nail polish dried, I think maybe underneath it just settled and just became smoother and all the details blurred. So I think it kind of works in my favour in some aspects of it because like the water looks blurry, the clouds have a really nice effect. Now I'm going to go over again with gouache and obviously it's a much harder surface to work on because it is a really, a really silky smooth surface after the nail polish but it's quite fun to draw over it, um, to paint over it and I enjoyed it again which is really weird because I thought this was going to be a really frustrating part of the video but it turned out to be more fun and I'm really glad that I fixed this up and didn't just forget this video because I thought you know, when I woke up and saw that how they had dried, I thought it was a lost cause, but I'm really glad that I fixed this one up and yeah, I think it looks cool and I think the effect is really cool in the end. So I'm just adding details and like I said, it's hard to paint over such a smooth surface with the gouache because the gouache is water-based, so I tried to get it as thick as I could to make it more opaque. I tried to paint the cloud to have a bit of a gradient, but yeah, I wasn't having any of it, so I just wiped it off. And it's sort of like painting on glass, that's similar, that's what I can compare it to. Trying to paint with glass but with water so it's not going to absorb, so you have to be really careful what you do. But to my surprise, actually the paints did eventually dry. I thought they just wouldn't dry and then we'd crack the painting and that would be that. But it did dry and I think it's a really cool effect in the end because there's like a layer of clear nail polish with some bubbles in it and I think that really works nicely with the water. And it's just, it's just fun. This video is just a bit of silliness really and I think that's what I want to do as well on my channel. I like to do fun videos because at the end of the day I want to entertain people. But is this entertaining? I don't know. I've had fun. I've entertained myself anyway. So <laughs> there we go. And yeah, we're gonna we're gonna crack this now. Okay, this is it. I'm gonna crack this now because it worked out pretty nicely in the end. Let's do it! It didn't sound very satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> Squishy, squishy. It kind of worked. So today we've learned a lesson about um, not being so precious, definitely, and having fun with art. That's right, that's how I'm gonna spin this. Okay, thanks for watching guys, and I will see you next time. Bye. Can you take pictures of, with my phone? of this and turn the camera off please. Actually I can do that. She's got the